Hello everyone, I am Topher Spinato of Topher Spin Meteorites. I am here in Tucson with one of my great friends. Everyone I've been introducing has been a friend, but this is a great friend of mine. This is Chris Monk, proprietor of Rocks on the Ground. Chris, thanks for joining me, man. Feels You're so, welcome. Still so formal shaking your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, okay, sorry guys. Don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Where is that from? Um, uh, Talladega Nights. <laughs> Ricky Bobby is being interviewed, and he's just like... <laughs> Shit, don't do that to the guy. If you do that in the middle of the interview, I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, shit. We've been, we have a lot of fun in Tucson, and Chris and I spend a lot of time together. Uh, we actually are, we didn't have the meteorite mansion this year, so we did the Bolide Bros Bungalow. And it's working. Small, small little place. Yeah. But it got us all set up still. Yeah. So we're having a blast. Um, so I wanted to, wanted to talk to you about a few things. Um, there's, there's so many, like, you got into meteorites roughly around the same time I did, like within the last seven, eight, nine years, something like that? So. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I was a little bit um, more closeted. Mm -hmm. I've kind of been a, a closet rock collector my whole life. I just didn't know that there was a community out there. And mm -hmm. that's kind of where you came in is. Oh, good. Um, saw you at a show up uh, Payson, I think yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. And you told me about your channel. I started listening, and I realized there's it's not just... Me in a closet. There's a whole community <laughs> yeah, out there. There's a bunch of nerds. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, and you've been joining. He's a. If you guys watch the channel, you obviously know Chris Monk is anyway. Uh, he, he's on the Hangouts pretty much every week that his work schedule allows him to. Uh, he's a, he's really entrenched himself into meteorites in the last couple of years. For for being so new, like your reputation and your trust level is like top echelon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on your behalf. Is that all right? Sure. All right. I want to talk about your saw in a minute because it's not just a $200 saw. Uh, but we'll talk about your saw. But you recently had the, the honor, privilege, and, I guess, motivated duty to, to uh, cut a very, 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 very rare meteorite. Yes. I, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up, uh, the NWA number, but mm -hmm. it's the second martian augite basalt and uh yeah it was pretty pretty nerve-wracking <laughs> holding a seventy thousand dollar stone that's this big you know yeah. and, and knowing that you're gonna cut it right now wow that's crazy because the only for i think 12 years maybe no maybe more maybe like 15 years whatever nwa 8159 mm -hmm. was the only martian augite basalt it was a single stone and the owners set the price, the value, at $10,000 a gram. If you want it, pay for it. If you don't want it, you yeah. don't have to own it. So, I, And I believe this is listed in the Met Bull as a pairing. That is so freaking cool. So wow. I, I could be wrong about that. I'd have to look, but um, yeah. One thing that's interesting, though, about it is it is paired material, possibly. I'm not going to quote you on that. But the stone you cut, Looks night and day different, freshness wise, weathering wise, structure wise, yeah. than the eight one five nine, which is really it's not that much to look at. That, but this this one definitely had a Martian um, structure on yeah, the inside. Yeah, that's super awesome, man. Like so, that's the kind of trust level people in the community are having with their one of two stones in the entire world. Um, so what, what equipment do you have? Uh, and well, This is not a commercial for your cutting services because you're a very busy man and don't reach out to him. <laughs> uh, unless you want me to people no, to reach out. No. <laughs> I, I get enough for my, the few hours a week I have. Yeah. But um, so I have several saws. I have a couple of Isomet 1000s, which uh, are a precise, slow uh, speed saw by Bueller. I also have one of George's wire saws, mm -hmm. um, which is a pretty cool addition. Uh, I love that thing. Yeah. The coolest thing about that saw is I can actually go to work and keep cutting, and I can get on my phone and start the next slice and, and you know be at work but still yeah. at home cutting. Remoting into your saw yeah. is a whole, new, a whole new concept, basically. Well, it allows me to get a lot more cutting done 
you still got the bottleneck of polishing. Yeah. Because no matter how many slices you have cut, you know, they're not finished until they're finished. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I know you have some slices waiting for me. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, it takes it takes a while because you you you're good at what you do and and you have a high uh, uh, high expectations for for the for your product. Yeah, I want everything to go out looking to my standard, so. Yeah. This wire that takes a while. The wire saw that you got from George um, you got a discount on it because you're a GMA member. That's correct. And I think that's like a fifteen hundred hour discount. So the saw is pretty a, a pretty substantial investment. Yeah. And and the wire saw, for those that don't know, it is extremely thin, long wire, and it just goes back and forth on a spool. On a spool, yeah. Yeah. And you can really dial it in. Once it's mounted, you can bring that blade down perfectly. In, in measured slices. Well, and a lot of the important, the, what allows it to be so um, good at cutting is it's, you can set the rate of rise onto the wire. Oh, yeah. You can dial increments of, I think, a hundredth of a millimeter. So wow. you can, you set the saw up for the wire width. When you go to next slice, it'll auto, if I set a, a slice at two millimeters, mm -hmm. I auto just push a button, next slice, it moves two millimeters plus the width of the wire, and wow. then comes yeah. down. So when you measure <laughs> it, it's pretty precise. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'll i never have a wire saw, but I, I gotta come over your house and at least play with it a little bit under supervision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I mean, the, the, the one downside to the wire saw is it, it does take a long time. So, I mean, you get into like the bigger stones like this, it could be a 10 hour, 12 hour cut. Yeah. For I, one slice. I, I, I'm aware of that, and I don't think a lot of other people are aware of that. It, it may be watching that the wire saw and the isomet are slow. Isomet's really fast well, for Comparably, what we're cutting. Yeah. yeah, I'm cutting stuff like this on my isomet. You know, I, yeah, I have a sure. five inch blade, but with a wire saw, you're you're not limited to that, and a, a substantial piece takes a substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could absolutely spend. 24 hours a day cutting and, and take a, a week to cut one stone that's something like four kilos or five kilos. Wow. Yes, that, that's interesting, man. Um, when it comes to collecting, because you're, you're a dealer, you collect and deal, but I want to talk about your collecting now. Okay. Um, I know that you and Roberto Vargas, who we, we had on here uh, a couple of days ago, I don't know when it was released, but you guys have two things in common. IMCA, well, many things in common. IMCA leadership and uh, your collection goals. So you are the vice president of the IMCA? That's correct. And that's a new position? That you're, it well, is. Well, new for you. I mean. it, yeah. It's, so recently we had um, a board member step down, and so I kind of stepped in to fill the vice president role. So I'm like Roberto's secretary. I just run around to ask <laughs> so, him if he needs the water. So, so you're the second lady of IMCA. <laughs> I'm okay. like the second lady of the IMCA. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And the IMCA is obviously the International Meteorite Collectors Association. Yeah. We've been members for a few years, and you're also a member of the GMA. So it's not that's they're right. not in competition. Global nope. Meteorite Asso Alliance Association. 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 Um, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, those two professional groups are not in, comp in competition with each other. No. They, they they exist in a synergistic world. So. Yeah, member of both. Um, all the same group of friends. Yeah, a lot of people are members of both. Um, some people are one or the other, but we all get along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just crashed a GMA party as an IMCA member. So, <laughs> um, collection goals, personal. You and Roberto have something in common that you've kind of accomplished and then got a setback well the so i much like uh roberto am a carbonaceous guy mm -hmm. um i have all of well almost all of the bin covenites so that's what i was alluding to <laughs> cb there is a there was one published not too long ago um ended up getting a slice of it and then immediately after that like a week later nea 071 published mm -hmm and just none of that material is available. So it's a punch to the gut when that happens. <laughs> Especially because I think the one before the NEA one was L. Millhouse 009, mm -hmm. a beautiful Ben Cumbenite. Yes. Uh, ben Cumbenite-like. 
Uh, what's the actual class? Do you know the actual classification on it? That one is CBA. CBA. The new one, the NEA seventy one, is CBB. So it's the second, I believe, CBB. Yeah. Total and CBB. there's thirteen, fourteen that are collectible, able Thir to be thirteen, I think now. Yeah. And there's thirteen now that are able to be collected. You have eleven of them. I have twelve. So twelve. So obviously, Fountain Hills isn't available. Mm -hmm. This NEA seventy one right now isn't available. And then I have all the rest of the obtainable ones. Well, this is a uh, call to any of our viewers out there, any of our serious viewers, collectors who are in the position to have any of NEA 071. Mm -hmm. Here's a gentleman who actually deserves to have in his collection. <laughs> so feel free to reach out to Chris Monk and make his carbonaceous Benkumanite dreams come true. Because this is the only way you're going to get it, is if the person who has it yeah. knows that you're a worthy collector. Because there's so many people out there looking for, the, the, like, it needs to go to someone who's it's going to complete their collection. Yeah, so, for sure. Give it to Chris, not to Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you're, uh, you, as a dealer, <clears throat> um, come down to Tucson with me year after year. Buy inventory, make 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 uh, investments in inventory, and you're going after certain classification because you are submitting them for classification, mm -hmm. making the donation, paying the fees, and then bringing it to market. And I think we're actually going to do a live sale, not live. We're going to do a video sale tomorrow of some of your classification. Um, there's a lot of them. A lot of them are, are carbonaceous, but there's a brand new one that I know you're happy with. So, it, yeah, it's it's been approved. It has not published yet, and I didn't check today to see if they updated. So the last update was on the 4th, mm -hmm. and um, that's also when I received notification that it was approved. But what's really cool about so it's a, a CK5. Um, what was really cool about it, though, is the name. So it's a new, I guess they're called a dense collection area. Correct. So it's, I'm going to butcher this. I'm, I call it Guaymar. But it's G U E M A R. And in Arabic, so I looked it up, and in Arabic, it means embers. So having a stone cool. that fell from space with fusion crust called embers, yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. That, check, check, and check. <laughs> Waymar 001 is what that's it was. That's awesome. Called. And it's a CK5. CK5. Um, so I would assume it's a lighter gray with some darker chondrules in there. Yeah, kind of kind of chalky looking. Um, you wouldn't want to drop it. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit friable, but I mean, the individual pieces, most of them have crust on them. Wow. It's I got a few slices that I've cut up. I need to cut up some more, but just even as a whole individual, it's it's just really cool because you get mm -hmm. little broken faces of the in interior and then crust. All yeah, over you it. don't need to cut it necessarily yeah, to, no, to enjoy beautiful. the inside of it. That's awesome, man. Uh, any other classifications that are on your mind right now? So I have. How many do you have? Um, 20 currently, about 21 when this Guimar is published. Mm -hmm. wow. So another recent one was a CM2. Mm -hmm. It is NWA17098. Um, have about 750 grams of that. Mm. That's the stuff that we were looking at last night. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah it's and just, in or, in, in, uh, at least one. I'm going to say a single, but there may be more. One beautiful oriented one, so... Yeah. If that's your boat, <laughs> this is your man. <laughs> yeah, got a. That one's a beautiful one. Yeah. There's a couple other ones that are whole, um, a bunch of broken fragments, and you know anything down to the milligram to up to grams. Awesome. I think the main mass is about nine grams. So I mean, it gives you an idea. Yeah, there's 750 grams, and and a lot of them are subgrams. So Bye -bye. it's a Happy bunch Angel. of stones. Yeah, a super, bunch of little stones. Super small and super affordable. You can. And get one for every family member. <laughs> yeah. And if if you mention this broadcast, you get two free grams. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ask for free meteorites. <laughs> Chris, what else do you have on your plate, man? What are, what are you working on as far as meteorites? What what's coming up that I don't know about? Is there a surprise dropping? No, I I do have I do have a couple that I haven't submitted yet that I've been meaning to. Um, I have one that's a CR. My guess is it's a CR mm -hmm. until it's classified. It's just a rock, but um, have a CR, uh, another uh, CV3 coming. I have several CV3s. I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of into the whole carbonaceous yeah, you are, life. Man. 
and <laughs> <laughs> carbonations for life. <laughs> well, I I appreciate y you as a friend. I really really do. Uh, you're the only guy I could see myself spending nine or ten days with here in Tucson and not wanting to strangle, <laughs> um, or be strangled. <laughs> Um, so I, I appreciate you, you stopping by and, and sitting down with me. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Oh, except for one thing. You're doing a great job. We're all real proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate yep. it. Thanks, dude.